I had a right to your life. Let's let's pray. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for all the amazing, transforming work of the gospel. Thank you for our precious family. Thank you for worship. That's a privilege given to us creatures here on earth to say this is how you can express it to me and I will accept it from your heart as fumbling as it looks. Thank you, Jesus, that you've given us that privilege. Open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of you, Jesus, the living Torah, the living word, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so Elijah has a word to share. Uh, uh, Psalm 113. So um, in terms of funeral arrangements, uh, regarding Leanne Talshahar, for those of you who have not heard, uh, she passed away into the loving arms of Jesus yesterday at 4.59 p.m. Uh, she took her last breath quietly listening to the song, Where You Are, by um, Worship Initiative, that rendition. And um, right where it says, I just want to be where you are, I just want to be near your heart because there's nothing like your love. That's exactly when she took her last breath into glory. It was quiet. It was peaceful. It was just the way everybody had to be out of the room. And it was Leanne and me. And it was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. I've had 16 beautiful years, 17 knowing her. And uh, it was around this time that I started getting to know her uh, off of eHarmony. Uh, I want to thank you all for praying. Um, we are transitioning, just like having a baby. You have to transition for six weeks. Well, we're transitioning to not having... Um, I want to say, she is. we don't regard her anymore in the flesh. We regard her in the... Woo! Jesus! Because we don't regard Jesus in the flesh, but in the spirit. Now we regard her in the spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that now... Because she is with Jesus. Your life is hid with Christ and God. And if she's with Jesus, Jesus is with us. By proxy, she is with us. Her life, her legacy is with us. So, um, all right, Elijah, hit it. So, as I was reading in my devotion, I... I opened my Bible up to Psalm 39. No, 113. Oh, 113. And I read the whole chapter since it was a short chapter. And so this is how it goes. Praise the Lord. Praise all servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed is the Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth Evermore. Forevermore. Right. From rising the sun is to setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations. His glory above the heavens. And who is like the Lord our God? He is who is seated on a high who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princess. With princess. Princes. Of his people. He give. He gives the barren woman a home, no. making her joyous mo mother of children. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, there's a whole smattering of different... Uh, Father, I, I don't know if I even have a word. Really, I don't. Um, but I will say is that um, but I will say that we don't give up. Even though our out this is second Corinthians four sixteen. 
even though our outer person's being destroyed, our inner person is being renewed day by day. And um, Malachi, Judah actually shared this this morning. He said, Malachi 4.2, But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go out and playfully jump like cats from the stall. You will trample the wicked, for they will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day I'm preparing, says the Lord of hosts. And I then I went to three six Malachi three sixteen. At that time those who feared the Lord spoke to one another. The Lord took notice and listened. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared Yahweh and had high regard for his name. They will be mine, says the Lord of hosts, a special possession on the day I am preparing. I will have compassion on them as a man has compassion on his son who serves him. So you will again see the difference between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. So, um, there's, do any one of you guys have um, anything that has impacted you really over the past week with the events with Leanne um, that really stands out that you're like, you know, I need to share this. Well, for me, it's really what I wrote on, um, really what I wrote on my Facebook page. Just, um, you know, I think for me anyway, the end impacted me in a lot of different ways. And um, I think it can be sums up as a woman who loved um, without restraints, you know. And um, and I think it's just I have it. I had it in front of me. It was doing something in me, but I didn't realize it. But now that she's gone, it's just oh my goodness, how precious it was, and I didn't realize it. So. And it's a lot like what Jesus did. You know, he died on a cross. And then you don't really realize how precious it is until you get, you know, born again and that you realize the extent of his sacrifice. So, yeah. Well, that's kind of what I got this week. Mike, do you want to say something? Yeah, uh, to me, it was kind of a personal uh, event trying to figure out we wanted to stand alongside of Leanne and protect her from this thing and thinking, Lord, what what's going on? Why is this happening in, in this way? And, uh, you know, questioning, questioning and doubting and then get to the point where you understand that, yeah, God's God's way and his will is going to happen no matter what our puny minds really think about things and he knows the beginning from the end so I had to come to that realization that I was just wanting my own things yeah. I wanted it my way and I wanted I wanted it to, to end the way I thought was more equitable but then there comes that, that faith that seed of faith that just says he's in charge it doesn't, it doesn't have to line up with my way of thinking and I just have to accept that there's something better coming through this. So now at this point, I'm just wondering if I could ask her one question, I'd ask, what was what was the ascension like? <laughs> you, know, you know, throughout the whole thing, people would say, you need to pray and declare victory and raise her from the dead and speak life into her and all this sort of stuff as if to prevent the inevitable. And what was amazing is the whole time I'd take it back to the Lord and I would say, <coughs> let's say, Jesus, what do you want me to do? For some reason, in my spirit, I felt I would be violating my conscience praying for healing and resurrection. I think for me, it started with you, Mike, having that feeling. That I had that feeling that when Bill, when it was Bill, you had the same feeling that you could pray for healing. For for, yeah. yeah. And I had the same feeling when Bill passed that just before I was trying to pray for healing and it, it was just wrong. It felt wrong in my spirit. And for the end, it's like I knew 
I knew that she was not going to be here. But at the same time, I'm like, am I supposed to pray for healing? Am I just not in faith? Right. And yeah. I should be? I think we all have that. Yeah. But here's the, here the word that God gave me. He said, learn from the Donald Trump debacle. Learn from your mistake. There were all these false expectations, false hopes. Like he's going to get in and this country will have revival. And it didn't. He said, learn from that. See, God works everything for good. That's not the way, way we, we were wanting. That's right. And in our hearts, there's a revival. Yes. Not the way we wanted. We would have want Leanne to be here. But because she's not here, there is a revival. Amen. Because I know for me, the, the, one of the last things she said, uh, the, the night before surgery, we had worship. I was um, putting away laundry. And... Uh, I wasn't sure what she was doing, but we were doing worship. She must have been, I think she was doing instructions for Mike and Kathy to, uh, yeah, for, for, the, for the kids. Yep, yep, meals and whatever. And um, um, I was having a hard time with Nam, I think. And I was, I was raising my voice. I was getting frustrated. She looked at me. She said, honey, your raising of voice is anger. It's sin. And it was this, I thought Jesus shined through her face. And immediately the word from James, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness that God requires. It broke me and I started weeping. And I said, oh Jesus, I'm sorry, a sinner. And I hope, I mean, and since that time, and, and my kids will have to testify, I've not raised my voice. What's that name? The Lord has changed me. And it's, it's, it's been a struggle for me. Um, so, God is having this full effect. Um, so, um, yeah. So I think the only thing left to do from here is we just pray. And... Uh, Oftentimes, our, our desires, even in the spirit, are reflective of our own arrogance and our own. Yeah, our amen. Thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Preach it. Yep. Just asking certain questions shows how little sometimes we understand God's ways. So. And how little we submit to the Lordship of Jesus exactly. Christ. Yeah. I mean, we, we know it, we have it, but we don't want don't the Lordship. Don't put it in your mouth. Yeah. We don't want the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So, and you know, that's, look how gracious our king we serve, where he uses it to teach us of, yeah, you really didn't trust me. I wasn't Lord in your life here. You've given me everything. Look at that hidden closet. You didn't give me that. Let me, let me show you what you have, you have so much to learn. And, um. Guys, my children, you guys need to learn that too. So, thank you, Jesus, for today. Lord, you are good. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord, for healing me, healing my families. I pray that you would raise up more special forces. Thank you, Jesus. You've done it here. In Jesus' name, amen.